please welcome Larry Ellison. Thank you. Thank you very much. We're, uh, we're here this afternoon to talk about the latest developments in our autonomous database technology. Uh, back at Oracle Open World last year, we announced the Oracle Autonomous Database, the world's first and only autonomous database. And then in March of this year, we delivered the first version of that for production use for data warehousing. So this was optimized uh, to run high performance queries. Uh, so we can handle data warehouses, data marts, data lakes, any, any large aggregation of data, go in and inquire about that data and return results in an optimal fashion. The cool thing about it was because it was autonomous, the database, you know, it was fully automated. Uh, human beings didn't create the database. Uh, the database is created itself. Human beings didn't tune the database. The database tuned itself. We were able to do that for data warehousing and data marts back in March of this year. And now we're announcing the immediate availability of the Oracle Autonomous Database for transaction processing. So now the, this machine learning based technology not only can optimize itself for queries for database, for, for database warehouses and uh, data marts, but we can also optimize, it also optimizes itself for transactions. So it can run batch programs, uh, reporting, Internet of Things, simple transactions, complex transactions, all of it, and, and mixed workloads. So between these two systems, the system that optimi is optimized for data warehousing and the system that's optimized for transaction processing, the Oracle Autonom Autonomous Database now handles all of your workloads, all of them. Okay, the Oracle Autonomous Database, everything, infrastructure, the database, the data center, everything is automated. There's nothing to learn, and there's nothing to do. Uh, think about this. How hard is it to learn to drive a self-driving car? <laughs> what kind of class do you take to, you know, who do you hire to teach you to drive a self-driving car? How long does it take to learn? I mean, it's kind of, it, I mean, it seems strange, but there's nothing to learn. If you want to use the Oracle Autonomous Database, you know what you have to learn? Nothing. So uh, the same thing with a self-driving car. Now, when you get in that self-driving car, how hard is it to drive? What do you need to do to drive that self-driving? Well, you have to tell, you, tell it where you want to go. You tell it where you want to go, and then you uh, take a nap or browse, browse the web or read a book or whatever. Uh, so, I know it sounds strange, nothing to learn, nothing to do. One of the interesting things about database technology is there are IT experts that specialize in relational databases like Oracle, and they learn how to drive these things. And uh, the traditional IT developer probably is not an expert at database, or the Oracle database, or any database. In fact, one of the reasons NoSQL databases are popular is because they're very easy to learn and use. It was the simplicity, you know, the fact that you didn't have to learn a lot in order to use a NoSQL database. It did a lot less, it, excuse me, it, it does, we have NoSQL databases. God bless you if you wanna use them. Uh, but the real attraction to the traditional developer to using a NoSQL database was there wasn't much to learn. It was get, put, very simple. The Oracle database was, you know, very complicated to learn how to how to create a database and how to manage the database and do all of that, that's all gone now. Now we're as simple to use as the simplest databases on the planet. No SQL databases. There's nothing to learn, there's nothing to do. We're much easier to use than any other relational database or object database or columnar database or what have you. 
uh, we are now the easiest database in the world to use because, again, I'll say it again, nothing to learn, nothing to do. And when there's nothing to learn and nothing to do, uh, it's much lower, there's much less labor associated with running this database, so it's much, much lower in cost. In fact, it's the lowest cost database to operate. Okay, another reason why the Oracle uh, database is so low cost to operate is that it's truly elastic. I know that Amazon calls its cloud the, you know, the elastic, EC2, elastic cloud. Uh, elastic compute, compute Cloud. But their databases are not elastic. Let me explain how this works. So when you create an Oracle database, the system automatically provisions itself. In other words, it allocates storage. It allocates network capacity. It allocates compute capacity and memory. Automatically allocates that stuff. But then when you start to run your application, Let's say you're not using all of that capacity. You don't really need that capacity. It's the load, let's say in the middle of the night, is very low. Well, if the load is very low, Oracle will start deallocating servers and deallocating servers. When Oracle's not running, when the, when the application isn't running, there is no server, there are zero servers allocated to the database. It's what's called serverless cloud or serverless system. And as you need capacity near the end of a month or the end of a quarter or a busy, you know, busy shopping day or what have you, it will automatically add servers while the system is still running. So as Oracle starts to slow down because more and more people log on and there are more and more transactions, it automatically adds another server. It automatically adds additional network I.O an additional I.O. capacity when it adds a server. It will automatically scale itself up as the, de as the demands on the system go up, so performance is sustained, and will automatically scale itself down, so when there isn't a lot of demand on the system, you're not paying for what you don't use. Amazon's databases can't do that. They can't dynamically add a server when the system is running. They can't dynamically add network capacity. They, can't, they don't, can't dynamically take a server away when there's not demand, and it's not serverless when it's idle. So this is the case, it's a truly elastic system. You only pay for the infrastructure that you use. That's one reason why we can guarantee to cut your Amazon infrastructure bill in half. We're not talking about the total cost of ownership. We're not talk about, talking about the part, yeah, yeah, we get rid of all the labor. No, that's, that, that's in addition. This is just the plain infrastructure, the cost of compute, networking, and storage. Just the infrastructure bill you get from Amazon to run either of their databases, Aurora or, or Redshift, just the infrastructure cost, we cut that bill in half. And of course, we eliminate virtually all of the labor, which is an even bigger savings. Truly elastic, you only pay for what you use. All right, uh, last year at Open World, I did a bunch of benchmarks where I compared the Oracle database running a data uh, warehouse to Redshift. And there were all of these benchmarks and we were between, actually closer to 10 times than five times, but we were, we were, we were consistently between five and 10 times faster than Redshift. And that was on the identical hardware configurations. Same hardware configurations. We were five to 10 times faster. Well, if you're five times faster and you charge by the minute, so you know, if we do in six seconds what they do in a minute, we're not just five, you know, we're just not 10 times faster. We're 10 times cheaper, because you're charging by the minute. These performance advantages translate into dramatically lower costs, because you charge by the minute. If we, run, if we, we, if we can do the same amount of work in half the time, we're half the price. If we can do the same amount of work in a quarter of the time, we do, we're a quarter of the price. 
And in the case of Amazon data warehouse with Redshift versus Oracle's data warehouse, autonomous data warehouse, we were between five to 10 times faster, five to 10 times cheaper. That's why it's actually very easy for us to guarantee, give you a written guarantee that we cut your Amazon bill in half. You take your existing Redshift application, bring it over to Oracle, we'll guarantee that your cost, your bill will be cut in half. Well, how did we do in transaction processing? That was then, this is now. How did we do in transaction processing? Well, Amazon has two separate databases, one designed for query processing, data warehousing, that's Redshift. They have another one that's designed for tr online transaction processing, and that's called Aurora. How did we do against Aurora? Well, in the very simplest case, the best we could get out of Aurora, you know, Aurora at its best is one-twelfth as fast as Oracle. This is when Aurora is really doing what, this is what, what I guess Amazon would show if they were showing these slides, uh, that Aurora was only, you know, because the second you, you have a mixed workload on Aurora, we're more, you know, more than 100 times faster than Amazon. And you can see that our transaction rate from pure transaction processing went from 18,300 to 18,100 when you added the mixed workload. You saw Amazon degraded quite a bit more. You know, they have to have one database that's pretty good at query processing, one great database. Well, I wouldn't say it's not, it actually isn't that good at query processing. It's okay, you know, it's the best thing they got for query processing. And then they got, and Aurora is the best thing they got for transaction processing. Neither one is very good, but when you put a mixed workload on one of them, when you have a combination of transactions and queries, it's really not, I mean, 100 times slower is not good. <laughs> Let me back, back up one, please. Can you back up the slide, please? Thank you. And so the second line. AWS has been around for a decade. It's been here for 10 years. Amazon Web Services has been here for 10 years. Amazon runs their business on Oracle. Now they said, they made a big announcement. Actually, they made a big announcement after I said, hey, Amazon's one of our best references. They just gave us another $50 million for the Oracle database. <laughs> and you know, the, they thought, they don't like being our best reference. <laughs> They, they think of themselves as a competitor. So it's kind of embarrassing when Amazon uses Oracle, but they want you to use Aurora and Redshift. And they say, oh yeah, AWS is great, we got Aurora, we got Redshift, what do you use? I don't, don't, don't ask, <laughs> don't ask. And then they say, oh no, but now they make a big announcement, we're gonna move by 2020, we think we can get off Oracle. By 2020, we think we can get off Oracle. Well, you know, it's interesting, They've had 10 years to get off Oracle, and they're still on Oracle. And it's not going to be easy for them to use their own technology. It's not gonna be cost effective. I mean, it's really, really hard. We've had other competitors. You know, competitors don't like being our best references. Amazon doesn't like being our best, one of our best references. I, I'm not gonna pick on our, our, our good customers. SAP is another big competitor. A decade ago, they came up with HANA, their own database, and they said they're gonna get off Oracle. They're getting everything off of Oracle and they're gonna run on HANA. 10 years later, they're still running on Oracle. All of their cloud, all their cloud applications are running on Oracle. Virtually all of their customers run on, or, you, know, you know, ERP customers run on Oracle. It's a really good database. It's a really good database, so good that our competitors, our competitors are some of our best references. At one point, I know there were articles in the newspaper, I don't know what Salesforce was thinking, but there were articles in the newspaper that Salesforce is gonna move off of Oracle, and they're testing Postgres, and they're testing this, and they're testing DB, they're testing all of this stuff. No, call them, they're not getting off of Oracle. It is by far the best database in the world, and it just got a lot better because now it's autonomous. 
It's not going to be easy. The first 10 years, Amazon couldn't get off of Oracle. I think we should watch them very closely. They got a goal to get off by 2020. SAP couldn't do it. Salesforce couldn't do it. I don't think they can do it. Anyway, we'll find out. Uh, OK, so next thing. Not only is Oracle much faster and much lower cost to operate, it also protects your data. It protects your data against data theft and cyber attacks of any, of any kind, but most importantly, against data theft. The terrible thing about when your data is stolen, you, sometimes if you're the CEO, you get your name on the front, in the front page of a newspaper. That's not good. You don't want your name on the front page of a newspaper. You don't want your data to be stolen. The Oracle Autonomous Database automates a great deal of data security. Uh, we have continuous monitoring to try to detect a threat or some kind of intrusion. So we're constantly monitoring to, you know, to check for, again, a, a threat, a vulnerability, an intrusion. The moment a threat is detected, the system has the ability to automatically patch itself while the system is still running. There's no system in the world that can do this other than Oracle. Automatic threat detection and automatic remediation while the system is still running. You know, normal systems, other systems, you have to schedule downtime. You got to take the system down and then patch the system. So you have to find all the systems that you have. You have to locate all the systems. Not easy. People have thousands or tens of thousands of databases, believe it or not, uh, large companies. But even, you know, but they're, it's very difficult just to keep track of all of them, take them down, make sure they're patched. When this is a manual process, you know, human beings make errors. When it's a manual process, it's a risky process. Now it's completely automated and it's immediate. The system, while running, we don't need downtime, while the system is running, it automatically patches itself and closes a security vulnerability. We don't have to take the system down to patch. In fact, we don't have to take the system down to upgrade from one version of Oracle to the next version of Oracle. We don't have to take the system down to scale, to add another server to the workload. In fact, your downtime, your downtime should be less than two and a half minutes every month. That's what we'll guarantee. Again, we will guarantee that we have 99.995% availability. We'll be up, including for maintenance and patching, you know, adding servers, everything. By the way, that, that includes the operating system. We can, we can patch, patch the OS while the system is running. That includes all downtime, everything. You're only down two and a half minutes guaranteed. Amazon can't do any of this stuff. That's why we're at least 100 times more reliable than they are. To patch, to scale, to, do, to upgrade, to do any of that stuff, they've got to take the system down. We don't. We do it while it's running. Therefore, the system is virtually always available. <sighs> A server fails. A server fails and your application keeps running. The system is fault tolerant. If a server fails, let's say there's a database software bug. A database software bug, it happens. You know, and, the, and therefore, one of the database servers failed, but not because the hardware failed, because the software failed. No problem, your application keeps running. We have multiple servers working you know, with Oracle, Oracle Rack, Oracle Parallel Server. We have multiple servers working on, you know, supporting your workload. So when there's a failure like that, the application doesn't even see it. Transaction just fails over automatically. Application keeps running. Amazon can't do that. They can't do anything like that. Uh, everything, every, so we tolerate. In other words, we don't, just because there's a hardware failure, System keeps running, we tolerate that failure. When there's a software failure, a system keeps running, we tolerate that failure. And because everything is automated, the system is autonomous, there are no human errors. Either accident, no human accidents and no human malice. You know, no mischief, no mistakes, 
all goes away because of automation. Amazon doesn't have that. Amazon's databases aren't autonomous. They can't tolerate hardware failures like that, or database server failure. They can't tolerate that. Again, uh, there's more reasons, more reasons why Oracle is 100 times more reliable than Amazon. We've been working on these problems for a very, very long time. I'm not gonna take you through this slide, <laughs> you know, uh, but just to say, just even since, since version nine of the database, and obviously there are versions that came before that, we have been doing all sorts, adding all sorts of features and functions to automate the Oracle software to make it on, on this journey to autonomous. We've been working on this for a very long time. And finally, with 18C, it's autonomous. And by the way, version 19C, which I will talk about right at the end of, my, of the presentation, is due out end of this year. So we have another version coming out very, very soon. So we continue to work, you know, work in, in delivering you know, all sorts of real cool things. But with 18C, we are fully autonomous now for data warehousing and transaction processing. But it's not sufficient. It is not sufficient just to make the database autonomous. The database runs on compute and storage and networking. Someone's got to manage all of that. And it can be you, it could be us, or better yet, it, it could be the system, the software, the machine, lear machine learning. It, the, this, this also could be made autonomous. And that's what we've done. We've been working on, on special, you know, adding all sorts of capabilities to the software, the underlying software and hardware that Oracle runs on, operating systems, uh, parallel server, things like Exadata, you know, interconnects, all this stuff. We have, you not only have to make the database autonomous, but you have to have the full automated capability on the underlying infrastructure as well. And then you're still not done because you have to then automate the processes in the data center. So to have a true, you know, for the, have an Oracle autonomous database, it's really made up of three separate big components. The database software itself in the middle, but the underlying infrastructure has to be autonomous, and the, uh, and the overall cloud the management of the overall cloud also has to be autonomous. Has to be autonomous, has to be reliable, has to be secure. To deliver that, those numbers, uh, those performance numbers, those availability numbers, you have to have all three pieces of the puzzle. Okay, how does it work? Well, it automatically provisions itself and we provision, it, it provisions, the autonomous database runs on this Exadata server. I mean, Exadata is a very interesting architecture. I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail, but it uses Intel, Intel processors. It uses, if you will, standard two-socket Intel servers, but has a very fancy interconnect, how they're interconnected. It has uh, some very fancy network security built you know, in it. It has you know, some very fancy reli you know, reliability so software and hardware, uh, but it, we, we run on Exadata, which is really a parallel server structure. And I'll, I'll, I'll show you that in, in the next slide. So, but it runs on our latest, fastest, autonomous infrastructure. And we use Rack, Real Application Clusters, parallel server, what it, what it used to be known as, but it's a parallel scale-out system. So your workload, whenever you're running an application, you never have one and only one server running the database. You always have at least two servers running the database. So if one fails, the other one picks up. And by the way, if one fails and another one picks up, a third, a third one is quickly allocated. You're never, you have no single points of failure in the system. The Exadata system is designed so there are no single points of failure so we can tolerate network, network losses, Server, you know, server losses, all of that with the application keep running. Uh, it's secure, uh, much more secure than other systems. I, I mentioned before how it automatically detects and then patches while running uh, vulnerabilities. Another thing it does, you, totally unique to Oracle, one big problem virtually all databases have is that the, tech, the techies who create the database, the DBAs who create the database, 
can see the user data inside the database. Maybe you don't want our programmers to know what's inside your database. So with Oracle, that's not the case. With Oracle, you know, we really have this separation of duties. Uh, the people who, cre you know, who create the database, if you will, the DBAs who kind of manage the technology cannot see the user data. That is not true in the Amazon databases. The people who create the databases can see the user data. That's a huge security vulnerability, enormous vulnerability that Oracle does not have. And of course, we encrypt all the data, in the, net, you know, both the data at rest and the data uh, when it's moving in the network. Again, uh, we patch all the software while the system is running, not just the database. If you can't patch, if there, what about an, there's an OS bug or an OS vulnerability? You better be able to patch that too. So we've been, you know, uh, you know our version of Linux, uh, we've been working on, a lot of people say, why is Oracle working on a version of Linux? There are eight, you know, there are lots of versions of Linux. Why, why create one more? Well, we created one more uh, for a variety of reasons. Performance was one reason. Uh, security, uh, security was another reason. We have to be able to patch that software while the system is still running. Because if all we can patch the database, we, otherwise we can't handle, handle the vulnerability. We've got to be able to do all of it. So it's, that's why we had to have a, automate the database and also automate the underlying infrastructure, including the operating system, VMs, and all that other stuff. Okay. And patch it and, and obviously manage it automatically. All right, uh, we, uh, we automatically back up the database. And it's, you know, depending on the policies you set, you set a policy, you could back it up to the same data center, you're probably gonna back it up to a different, a separate data center. Uh, we, you know, keep, uh, you know, if you, if you select Active Data Guard, we run Active Data Guard in, a, in another data center, uh, and we do that. Uh, so, the system is highly, highly reliable. And all, again, all of this stuff is automated. The scalability, I mentioned earlier, you never have, you can see this, as you need more capacity, chunk, here comes another server, here comes another server, here comes another server. Then you don't need it, it goes away, it goes away. Nobody does this. So you only pay for the stuff that you use. It truly is elastic. There is not, nobody but Oracle can do this because of how we do parallel server and how, how, how our architecture works with, with rack or parallel server. It really is truly pay for what you use. Uh, it's, the system automatically tunes and optimizes itself. So it automatically creates and drops indexes. It automatically rebuilds query plans. It, and you'll, you'll see in 19C we've added, we've added something really cool. I don't wanna get ahead of myself, but everyone's very excited about this, but it, we have autonomous regression testing, if you will. It automatically tests itself to make sure nothing can ever go slower. You know, as we tune new versions of the database, this is kind of a little inside baseball, but, uh, but as we make the database faster with new versions, and we tune 1,000 queries, 999 of them run faster, one runs slower and someone gets very upset about the one that runs slower. And that will never happen again. Now with autonomous, uh, with 19C, it checks the new query, query plans to make sure that if they're not faster, we'll use the old query plan. It's just autonomous regression. There can be no more regressions. The system will make sure that never happens again. That's 19C, you gotta wait till the end of the year for that. But, but again, we continue to opt, you know, optimize and automate even back to automating testing. Okay, so uh, specialized workloads. Auto, uh, automated data warehousing is designed for very complicated queries uh, uh, versus uh, automated tra uh, autonomous transaction processing. It's for OLTP. Uh, the data is stored differently. You know, as the system optimizes itself, as, we, as the machine learns about how to tune itself, as machine learning works, uh, for the automated data warehouse, we use a columnar format. The data is stored in column forms. 
uh, with transaction processing, it's rows. Uh, in the case of you know, some, some of the optimizations, this is just a few, a few examples. Uh, so one of the optimizations for, uh, for uh, data warehousing is we'll see if, you, if you're constantly asking the same query over and over again, we'll pre-compute the query. You know, and, we'll, and we'll keep it around. So the next time we don't have to compute. We can just say you just, you just asked that question or someone else just asked that question. Here's the result. You get it instantaneously. So you know, it creates data, you know, data summaries. Uh, in the case of OLTP, the toughest thing is getting data off of your storage device, probably flash these days, not disk, but get it from, get it from storage and into memory. And to do that very fast, there's a technique called RDMA. It's just reading directly into memory, not, by, you know, not having a long code path to go through. Anyway, the, these are examples of how performance optimizations for and how they're different between transaction processing and data warehousing. And now the machine learning, the machine has learned how to do both with the latest version of the Oracle database. Uh, okay. There are lots of benefits. Uh, you don't, we upgrade the OS for you. Uh, if the OS has a security vulnerability, we patch it for you automatically. We keep it up to date. So you know that your version of the database and your version of the OS and your version of the VM have all of the latest security patches on them and that we're constantly monitoring for new vulnerabilities and if, they, if one shows up, we immediately patch that. There's no delay. And we do that you know, across the board. Uh, so I know some people say, oh my God, all this is automated. What, what, you know, I'm a DBA, I've been an Oracle expert for years. Am I, you know, am, am I up for early retirement? Uh, so I got some bad news for you, no early retirement. Uh, your job, I mean, a lot of the tedious things you were doing, allocating disk storage and you know, um, upgrading the OS, is, you don't have to do that. However, there's lots more to do. Uh, we, you'd be able to uh, work with the developers to you know, create new applications, uh, uh, improve the analytics, uh, do, you do a better job with da you know, data design. I mean, CIOs are called chief information officers you know, because they're trying to get the most out of the company's information. DBAs should be helping, you know, our database administrators, they administer the data. They should be marching exactly in the same direction, trying to maximize the value of the data, create more applications, uh, improve the analytics, improve the insights available to the company on the data. They shouldn't just be patching the operating system. They shouldn't just be adding more storage buying more storage and doing all of that. It's nice to automate the tedious stuff away so you can focus on the mission, which is to get the most out of your data and build new applications for your customers. Uh, and of course, by not having human beings doing some of the tedious clerical work in terms of running the database, if you eliminate human labor, you also eliminate human error and your system is much safer, much more reliable, much more secure. Okay, uh, I mentioned this earlier, developers who are not database experts now can use the Oracle database. It's now the easiest database in the world to use. Uh, so a developer does, is not dependent on a database expert to set, set the database up for them. And they, you know, they can do it, they can get started right away. They can create their own database. Uh, they don't have to rely on other people to tune, to tune their application. The application will tune itself. Uh, and this makes developers and IT organizations dramatically more productive. And that's a huge benefit. I mean, uh, productivity, being able to get your applications out sooner, those applications being more reliable, more performant, having better UIs, all of that stuff is made possible by using the most advanced autonomous database. And it's very easy, by the way, if you're, if you're using Amazon Aurora, and we encourage you to do this, to go from Amazon Aurora uh, to move over to Oracle Autonomous Database, or uh, Azure SQL, micro, that's uh, you know, Microsoft's product, or Mongo. It's very easy to simply use our migration tools to pump the data from 
these manual databases into the Oracle Autonomous Database. It's fascinating. Most people who are breached, most people who suffer data theft, suffer data theft long after the vulnerability was known about and a patch was available to fix the vulnerability. I mean, it's, and that makes it all the more embarrassing and costly. Uh, so the great thing about the Oracle Autonomous Database the second a vulnerability is detected, the system patches, finds all the versions of the database that are vulnerable, and immediately patches them. There's no time delay. And you know they've all been patched because the system patched them. You weren't, rel you weren't reliant upon some manual process to schedule the appropriate downtime to get your database secured. The detection of the vulnerability is automatic. The remediation, the patching is automatic and immediate. OK. You'll see the number 99.995 all over the place. Um, it's highly, highly available. Uh, failures. Uh, we tolerate hardware failures. We tolerate software failures. We eliminate human errors. Uh, the database. You get a new version of Oracle. So let's say, you know, we're, I said we're on 18C now, or the autonomous database out at the end, comes out at the end of the year is 19C. And OK, well, how much downtime do I have to schedule to move from 18C to 19C? I've got to change all the database software. How much downtime? None. None. Because we have multiple servers running your application, multiple database servers, what happens is, let's say you, let's say you only have two. You could have two, four, 16, whatever. But let's say you have the minimum, you have two uh, uh, running on Exadata. What happens is we take one down, upgrade the software from 18 to 19, bring it back up, take the other one down, upgrade from 18 to 19, bring it back up, and you're running. So what happens is for a little while you're running on one server. Actually, that's, even that's not true because you have another one in reserve. You have, you're, you're, you're always fault tolerant. So, you, so if during that upgrade there's a failure in the server you're still running, you'll fail over to another 18C server. So you can argue there's always three, there's always at least, you know, conceptually there's always at least three servers uh, when, you, when we're doing the upgrade. But we can upgrade, change the software while the application's still running, no scheduled downtime. Uh, the system constantly is tuning itself. This is another thing. So, so um, it's not, typically when an application is built by a developer and then the database expert goes in and tunes the application, once it's tuned, it goes live, it's tuned and it's, and it's live. Uh, after a while, a week, months, couple years, the database might have gotten a lot larger. The distribution of the data could have changed. Uh, the tuning that was done initially might not be appropriate for the current situation. There could be more users, more data, different distribution of data, all this other stuff. The Oracle Autonomous Database continuously tunes itself. It's not like one off in the beginning, then maybe once every year or something like that. It's constant, continuously tuning itself. This makes it faster and much cheaper to operate. Because we're, uh, because we're optimizing both for performance and using a minimum amount of infrastructure to get that performance. And you just pay for the infrastructure you use. Uh, we even handle, we even protect against user errors. Uh, let's say someone by mistake deletes, you know, a thousand customers. All the begin, you know, last names begin with E. Um, I think like Amazon will probably delete my account. I, I better <laughs> today. I'll probably. I, fortunately, I have, a, I have. I just bought the latest Kindle, so it's a great product. <laughs> so, if someone makes a mistake and deletes data they shouldn't have deleted, we have the, this this thing called flashback queries that allows you to go back go back to earlier versions of the database, not backups. You know, earlier you know earlier versions of of a, of a specific query result and recover that data. 
They don't have anything like that. So we have the ability to even protect against user errors, whether they're mis honest mistakes or done with malicious intent. We handle all of those situations. Makes us much more reliable, much more secure, and much more available. Okay. Again, I think I, I said this before, very easy to move uh, an Oracle database uh, into the cloud, uh, an on-premise database into the cloud, or move MySQL or Postgres or you know, something else into the cloud. Uh, you simply use our data pump, uh, which uh, will make the appropriate data format conversions, make sure the data is encrypted, uh, remove administrative privileges that create security vulnerabilities, does all of, the, all of those things. And, uh, the fact, and, and, and we use Golden Gate, uh, our Golden Gate technology to make sure even during the migration, your system is accessible and your system can keep running. Okay, so the lowest cost database to run. If you're an existing Oracle customer, if you already have Oracle licenses, you don't have to buy any Oracle database software. You already own Oracle database software. So if you have on-premise licenses, you can reuse those licenses. There's nothing to buy. There's no, no database software to buy. You just reuse those licenses in our cloud. You continue to pay support, but those database licenses are now in the cloud. They're not on-premise. So there's no additional software costs. All you pay for is the infrastructure that you use. And again, we, we're very good at minimizing the amount of infrastructure you use because we automatically scale up and scale down. It truly is elastic. And because of the, that elasticity, uh, you only pay, pay for what you use, we can reduce your costs dramatically. I know we guarantee 50%. We guarantee 50%. We can do a lot better than that. Our experience has shown we've, you know, we cut costs a lot more than 50%, uh, just on infrastructure alone. And then uh, the, the, the fact that we eliminate the labor, that we eliminate the labor is even a bigger deal. I'll go to the next slide. I mean, this is really more important than cutting your Amazon infrastructure bill by 50% or 60% or 70% or 80%. Whatever it is, it's going to be more than 50 for sure. Uh, but the biggest deal is all of that labor is now goes to zero. All of that cost, all, and all of those valuable human resources, all of those experts, those database experts, can now be working on uh, building new applications, building, creating new databases, getting better, improving your analytics, getting better insights about your business. Those precious resources, which are in short supply, can be redeployed for a more useful tasks than allocating storage and allocating, you know, and buying network cards and doing those, buying and those kind of things. There's a huge amount of cost in downtime. When you, when you have to, uh, uh, it can be extraordinary cost. If, if you have to schedule downtime to patch a security vulnerability, and you, your data is still in, between the time you scheduled the downtime and you, and you did the patch, the cost is going to be extraordinary. But just downtime in general, downtime for maintenance, downtime, you know, downtime because of hardware failures, downtime because of software failures, downtime because of patching, all of that downtime is very expensive. It has to be scheduled. Uh, there's a lot of costs associated with it. Those costs go away. There are no costs. And of course, the productivity, back to the productivity of your people, who are no longer doing administrative tasks, but again are building the next generation application with the next generation voice UI, with the next generation visualization and analytics, freeing up the resources to innovate uh, rather than administrate, makes, us, makes all, of, all of the users more, more effective. Okay, you can try it for free. Uh, it's, it's immediately available. Uh, just log on, log on to our cloud and, get a, uh, and, and give it a test drive. Uh, I think you'll like it. 
The, okay, I'm gonna take, I'm, gonna t I'm almost done. I'm gonna take two minutes. I mean, everything I've talked about so far is available immediately. We have it. Aut autonomous transaction processing, autonomous data warehouse, all of this stuff is available now. I am gonna do a little bit of a teaser. I'll talk about this uh, at Oracle Open World, and that's the new version of Oracle 19C, which I think will be out before, it's supposed to be out in 2019, but you know, we've already named it 19C, but it might be out in 2018, I hope you forgive us. Uh, so, you know, it's gonna be out either at the end of this year or worst case, January next year. Uh, one of the coolest things, you don't have to read the slide, one of the coolest things is this idea that as you upgrade to 19C, there will be no performance regressions, no query plan performance regressions. So we think all your queries will run faster except the ones that run the same. And that's the worst case, is running the same. Because well, literally as we run the application, run those queries for the first time, we'll kind of run side by, you know, we'll run kind of a test side by side of those things. The old query plan, the new query plan, if the new query plan's faster, great, you get the new query plan. If the old query plan is faster, you keep the old query plan. No more performance regression testing. That's a huge effort that our, our, our customers have to make to upgrade from one, between one version of our database and another. Is all, this, all this testing for regressions for you know, where the system has gotten worse, not better. Uh, the system does that for you, know, for you now in 19C. Uh, how, good, how good is our automated tuning? I mean, interesting question. Uh, with 19C, we did, you know, we, we, we did this very interesting test. We took an enormously complicated system uh, with high quality experts tuning it over a long period of time. And that's the NetSuite ERP system, the NetSuite cloud ERP system. And actually, straight out of the box, right now, current state of 19C, straight out of the box, is slightly faster slightly faster than what all of the experts were able to do over the last 20 years. So it's had, this has had 20 years of expert tuning. This is their business, making this system run fast, and they've had lots of experience with lots of different users. I mean, they have thousands and thousands of companies on this thing. I think 20,000 companies, something like that, you know, using the CRP system. And already the expert system is a little better than the 20 years of expert tuning that's gone into it. It's kind of remarkable. And, it's, and, it just, and the machine's just gonna get smarter and smarter and smarter. The uh, other thing we're offering with 19C is the ability, give you, giving you a choice between what I've described in 18C as the serverless system. Again, the serverless system is you go ahead and you provision the system, uh, but when the, the system's not running, you, you, have, you haven't reserved anything specifically for you. You're on this, in this pool of Exadata machines. Uh, again, it's a cloud. There are other tenants in the cloud. It's a multi-tenant system. There are other tenants in the cloud. So uh, when your, your application is running, you're using some member of those Exadata servers. Uh, and when your application is not running, you're using zero, none of those servers. And you only pay for what you use. And we think a lot of people want exactly that. It automatically scales up and scales down. We think a lot of people want that. However, we think some of our largest customers are gonna say, ah, you know, I don't wanna share, I don't wanna share my Exadata with anybody. I don't want any other companies on this machine or on this network. I don't want any noisy neighbors. I don't want anyone near me. I wanna rent the entire neighborhood myself. When I'm not in my house, don't rent it. Don't put it on an Airbnb. I own it. <laughs> Keep everyone out. No one touch it. So we give you, uh, we give the ability to have dedicated infrastructure. Say, okay, I want to get five x data machines or 20 x data machines and I want them absolutely dedicated to my bank or my phone company or what, or what have you. And then our customers then have the ability to partition up their, their workloads using our container database and there are all sorts of things they can do, but, it, then, it, but then it belongs only to that phone company, only to that, uh, to, uh, to that bank. And you're not even sharing the network. You don't even share the, you know, the, the, the network between the, the, the computer, the, uh, the compute system, and the storage system. 
you're the only one on that part of the network. It is dedicated to you. The network is, the storage is, the compute is. You can partition it uh, the, uh, the way you want. Nobody else, no other cloud, offers this kind of isolation inside of their public cloud. So again, we're give, giving these two choices. You can have the multi-tenant system where you're really optimizing for uh, lowest cost. In other words, if you're not using the server, let someone else use it. I don't care, you know, fine, fine with me. And I think most of our customers will kind of end up that way. But I think some of our biggest customers will, will like this idea of absolutely dedicated, isolated, that's my storage, that's my network, that's, that's my compute, I'm the only one using that. But you got a choice, we offer both. And, okay, and that's what I just said. And I think this is pretty much my last slide. And clouded customer. So some of our, again, some of our very, very large customers, because of statutory requirements, really don't want to be in a public cloud at all. Even the, even the dedicated infrastructure, which is pretty isolated, they just, they want all this stuff behind their own firewall. And we, okay, we can basically build the Oracle cloud in your data center. We can put the Oracle cloud in your data center and you get the same autonomous capabilities. The same, you know, you get the same OS, the same VM, uh, you get the same hardware, you know, the Exadata hardware, you get the same, everything is the same, same software. So we can deliver the Oracle Autonomous Database, uh, all the automatic patching, all the reliability, security, availability, and we can deliver that inside of your own data center. It's the same model, you don't buy the hardware, you know, you, you, subscribe, you, you subscribe to the hardware, you subscribe to the service. It, you just say, no, no, I, I don't want it in your cloud. I want it, I want it in my data center. I mean, there are, there are significant advantages to that. You, you, you have a very high-speed network. So there's, you know, there's very low, it's very low latency, high-speed network because it's right in your data center. And again, some, of, some very big customers, you know, again, big phone companies, big banks, uh, are highly regulated and they want that additional level of protection. They want all of the automation in a the cloud. They want the autonom autonomous capabilities of our database. They want the security, they want the reliability, but they say, well, can't you just stick that on our floor rather than in your public cloud? And we, so we take the exact, we basically take a little Oracle cloud and build it into their data center. And that's unique to Oracle. We're the only ones that are doing that, but our very largest customers have said that's the only way they're able to go to the cloud now. So we're making, making that available. And that comes with 19C. So in conclusion, uh, the Oracle Autonomous Database takes this manual process of creating and managing databases and automates the entire thing end to end. This gives you a much more reliable system, a much more secure system, a system that protects, protects against data theft, a system that's up 99.995% uh, of the time, and a system that makes you and your developers dramatically more productive. Thank you very much.